Hey there, it's John from Excel Campus, and in this video, I'm going to explain how to create a dynamic dropdown that displays a filtered range. So what do I mean by that? Well, this is the fourth video in a series where I'm explaining how I created this interactive report and dashboard for the Excel hash competition. If you haven't seen any of the previous videos, definitely check out part one. I explain more about this file and exactly how to create it and the steps we're doing to create it. So in this video, we're specifically just going to look at this dropdown here on the dashboard. And this dropdown contains a list of departments. When we select a department, and this I should mention that this list is also dynamic, meaning it will expand as new departments become available in the source table. It'll expand automatically. So I'll explain how we use the unique function for that, which is one of the new dynamic array functions. And when we select one of these options, that's going to display this filtered range down here of just the employees in that department and the sum of the hours they worked for that week. So we're going to look at this. I explained in the previous video how to use the new dynamic array functions to create these lists here, these dynamic lists. So check that one out as well. Here we're just going to look at how to populate the data on the dashboard sheet. So on the dashboard, we're first going to look at how to make it interactive with this dropdown. And again, when we change the dropdown and choose a different department, that's going to then uh, filter down the employees. So in order to uh, create the dropdown, I'm going to go over to this dashboard example sheet. Now I have created a merged cell here. You don't have to have a merged cell. It just makes it easier to look at. So we've merged B5 and C5, select that cell. And then we're going to uh, put a list of unique values for the data validation source. So I didn't explain that. So we'll go back over to the calc sheet. And in this cell right here in J2, I am using the unique function to create that list, that list of unique values uh, based on all of the departments in the departments table. So if we go over to that sheet, oh, let's go over to the sheet. Sorry about that. In this employee sheet, we have this department table. We have all the departments right here. You can see there's duplicate values there uh, for each employee. So we're using the unique function to return a list of just the unique values, a, a list of unique departments. And in that function, we're also including the header row. So we have an option for all departments because uh, that's the header row there. And if we go back over to the calc sheet, we can see that here we have all departments and then the, a list of unique values for all of the departments as well. So that's that unique function. So we go back over to the dashboard here, or we'll go to the dashboard example, uh, select that cell, go to the data tab on the ribbon, and then we're going to choose uh, data validation. Uh, we'll, yeah, we'll just hit yes here because again, we have that merged cell. And here for our list, uh, we want to create this reference here. I thought I deleted it, but I guess I didn't. Uh, so we're going to just, we can just click this here. We can go uh, J2. And then since we want to reference the spill range there for J2, because J2 is using the unique function to create that spill range, we'll just add the uh, hashtag symbol to the end of that, hit enter. And so that's going to give us that list of unique values or this list here. And if there's more departments added to our departments table in the future, it's automatically going to update and include those. Uh, so that's one benefit of using this method with the spill range here uh, for uh, the uh, data validation list. So now if we select, we can select from the dropdown and actually select a department. And then one other little tip here that you might have noticed about my dropdown, if I select a cell off of that, you can see here I have this little icon that looks like the uh, drop down icon and it's actually a shape and I have a separate article that explains this technique in detail, but it's a shape here and it's kind of grayed out to look to make it look like that uh, there's a drop down there. It just lets the user know that there's a drop down there. And if they click on this, this shape, the shape is hyperlinked to cell B5. So you can click this to activate the drop down uh, and that will then select this cell right here and show the actual uh, drop down icon. And then of course you can click it. So that's a little trick there, uh, but I just wanted to explain how that works. If you saw that there and you're wondering how I kind of created that disabled or shadow icon there, I'll, I'll link to that uh, in the description below this video so you can check that out and implement that too. It's a great little technique. Uh, so next, all we have here is just uh, spill range references to our calc sheet. So we jump back over to our dashboard 
here uh, for the employee, we just want to create a list. So I'm going to type equals and then go over to our calc sheet. And we want this list right here, this sorted list of employees. So we can just select C2, again, type hashtag after it, hit enter, and that will give us that list there. Do the same thing for hours, or we can even copy and paste, and copy and paste right here. Uh, and that will do the same thing. We'll just create a reference to the spill range in D2, and that'll give us our list here. Again, that's on the calc sheet, and that's the sum of times in that sorted uh, descending order. So that's what we have on our dashboard. And again, this becomes interactive as we change the department. Uh, that's going to change the spill range references here, again, based on those calculations and the filter function here on the calc sheet. So now that we've made it interactive, uh, in the next video, we'll look at, how, look at how to create these icons with conditional formatting and add them to the dashboard. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.